<laughs> what last joining us now to discuss what's been happening the last 24 hours and that was a marathon marathon judgment can you imagine sitting in the supreme court for 12 hours let me tell you something 12 hours let me tell you something mm? in the history of kenya no any judgment has even taken that long never you understand never yesterday orengo's opening speech was saying that this is the most historic moment in this country mm -hmm. no judgment has ever taken this long but you see each and every single detail this is not a, a joke my friend no, this is uh this, this is, is it bro. and the world was watching the world was watching give us reasons you annulled an election, election. presidential so, election yes. So give us the reason, and everybody read. And Jokin Dungu was Ooh. the longest Ooh. reader. What's it? 440 pages. You can imagine. Let's ask Steve Ogola, mm. advocate, what he thinks, what he thought mm. of the marathon judgment. Steve, welcome to Hot 96. Thank you, Jeff. Good Thank to see you. Mm. Karibu sana. Mm. Your thoughts, Steve. I mean, obviously, you know, as an advocate, you, uh, this is a standard requirement. Mm. But uh, your thoughts, and we obviously we know, we knew the judgment from the beginning was majority four to two. When they read it yesterday, were you convinced? Well, I think uh, what they said is what we expected. We expected the majority to justify the determination. Remember, um, the aspects of a judgment there has to be the introduction, which is the the title, mm -hmm. uh, Raila Odinga versus Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. and two others. Uh, there has to be the, the preamble, which is basically a description of the parties. Yeah. And then there has been the a statement of the case as was presented by the petitioner, then the rebuttals by the respondents, then the analysis, and then now the determination. Now, in terms of um, uh, writing or uh, drafting of a judgment, a judgment must have what we call must be intelligible, must be coherent, must be persuasive, and must, have, must be coherent, uh, uh, must, must have a, a flow. So then we expected that the determination, which was already given on first, would then there will be a build-up that reaches that determination, and that is what uh, the majority gave. Mm. Uh, we also saw Justices uh, um, Ndungu and Ojuan giving their detailed uh, dissenting opinion. What I found uh, uh, very interesting is that our judiciary has come of age, uh, that people are able to dissent and they're able to give a detailed analysis. Those judges, uh, those judgments have equal value. Let nobody think that they don't have equal value. The only reason why now the petition succeeded is that four of those judges sat on the same side. The dissenting opinion, uh, the two of them, had equal value in terms of uh, discerning the jurisprudence where, where Kenya is going mm. as a country mm. with a stable uh, legal practice. Yeah. Yes. No, my brother. <laughs> oh, this is radio. And uh, some of us <laughs> don't. might not know the jurisdiction. <laughs> Just turn it down. Okay, okay. No, no. <laughs> Break it down for uh, us. Break it down. Eh? <laughs> what about <we're> traffic? <laughs> I must get jurisprudence. Jurisprudence. Uh, dissenting. Uh, dissenting. Uh, so dissenting okay, okay, is, right. <laughs> is not to accept. Eh? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Dissent is not to accept. Oh, eh? that, is, well, is, Jalas, you know, one of the problems of lawyers <laughs> is that uh, you speak with a legal mind, mm. uh, when I see you, I see the law. <laughs> <laughs> there's too much legalese. So, so, so you see, English almost itself almost is a problem to some of us, <laughs> but to come up with what is was there. There's almost, <laughs> there's almost always an irresistible urge mm. to speak legalese, but I think uh, yeah. that's a good point for mm. our listeners, wherever mm. they, uh, they may be, in, at mm. homes, in traffic. Basically, what the judges said, we agree with Raila's case, that there was election tampering by IEBC. Mm. You get mm -hmm. the case was against IEBC. The right. case was not against Uru Kenyatta. Right. Uru Kenyatta was what you may call maybe collateral damage for lack of a better word, uh, because you present to say IEBC did not manage the case uh, the election well, and as a consequence, if the court agreed, it meant that the, the person IEBC declared the winner who was uh, Uru Kenyatta. Now that declaration of Uru Kenyatta as the winner was now reversed. Um, Two of the judges, Njoki and Ojuang, said, no, 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 we are happy with the way election was managed, you know, mm -hmm. and there's no need to disturb the outcome of that election insofar as you have not tampered with the ballot papers at the polling station. And I think we cannot devalue the comments made by the two justices. Uh, it's something that lawyers will interrogate, and I invite the public to also interrogate them. The decisions are uh, available online. I think so. most of us have seen them. Mm. You can read them for promotional value, for information. 
Uh, but I think that is what happened yesterday. Okay, basically, me. you talked about the IBC. Yes, yes. As being the main culprit, if you will. Yes. But then they were not found to be criminal. And Jalas and I were talking about this earlier on. Yes. No, 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 they were not found to have committed any criminal uh, yes. intention, if you will. Yes. But, but... But they were told to follow the ad law, adhere or whatever, strictly follow the law. Yes, and that's what I was telling you. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that the judges did a global analysis, not a detailed analysis that goes to who managed what. They looked at um, the overall uh, uh, legal framework and whether it was complied with. I could perhaps compare that with um, a saying that that, uh, that, uh, that requires that says that. Let justice be done, even if heavens may fall. Mm, so then, yeah. uh, w this is the law. If you are able to show me that some steps were not followed, I will not go into inquiring who is it that was responsible for that step. As long as it's demonstrable that a particular step was not followed, as a judge, I'm happy to nullify. It's just like giving a warning then, or being sent to the headmaster's office and just being given a slap on the wrist. It's a case of one to ten. To go to 1 to 10, mm. you have to go through 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right. But if you skip 5 and 6, but still get to 10, you haven't followed the due process. So this time, go back and make sure that you include 5 and 6. Okay, so go back as who? Use the same people, the same uh, outfit, the yes. same team? Basically, what it now means for ABC is that they must now do internal reflection. I think, first of all, let us underscore the fact that it's a good thing that the judges did not disturb the setup of the commission. Because had they indicted, had they found someone culpable or mm. maybe guilty mm. of um, maybe election mismanagement, pointed fingers, then it would have made that person, uh, his, his, his place there and his participation in election preparation no longer tenable. And he may need it. He may have, he may have to step aside the way NASA was uh, demanding. Mm -hmm. But right now, what well, the court has said that we recognize that there were some requirements in the law which were not followed. Now, go back, retrace, retrace your steps, be sure to observe each and every legal, uh, legal requirement and do as the law has required you mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a huge benefit, a uh, vote of confidence. If you, it gives IBC an opportunity to begin to innovate within the challenges. Mm -hmm. They will reflect at the secretariat, at the commissioner's level, and the other field officers, the presiding officers, uh, the clerks, the, re uh, the constituency returning officers, mm -hmm. they must then begin to reflect and say, what is my role in election management? And let me be sure that I will deliver it. Because the challenge now we have, Jeff, is this. If the clerk at the polling station messes up with all the good intentions of the commission, the election may as well be cancelled again. Mm. That is what the court was saying. Right. Because you see, Maraga was trying to emphasize that fact. So is the pressure off of the IBC? Certainly the pressure is off. And if NASA insists that IBC has to be reconstituted? Well, I think uh, NASA, to be honest, NASA's claims now have been delegitimized in a, in a very significant... Okay, it's a blow to NASA's claim for maybe a better word. Mm. It's a blow to NASA's claim because what would be the foundation for your sustained demand that let's say for instance Ezra Chilobo must go uh, let's say one of the commissioners or some of the commissioners must go the court already said that after considering the evidence available remember they had 21 days to consider that evidence yeah. in a very organized format and they are unable to pinpoint any particular person because what they did was a global overview it means NASA is no longer able also to demand specific heads to roll. What, they can, what, what NASA can do, mm. and I hope they do so, is to also urge IBC to make sure that now that you have the, a, a vote of confidence, that go ahead and organize the election. Could you please be sure that in terms of election preparation, you get it right? Although, Jeff, the, the only challenge for sure, and I think that is what uh, the dissenting judges, uh, the judges who disagree are trying to highlight, mm. you know, there is... The real, there, is, there is the law, you know, and then there's the lived reality in a maturing democracy. Listen, if you adopt an approach that says let justice be done even if the heavens may fall, any slight transgression will lead to a nullification. And the it's, heavens will fall. You know, and the heavens will fall. Yeah. But how many times can heaven fall in a maturing democracy? Mm. Um, have we transitioned so much into the future? Has the judges 
sort of uh, brought our, our democracy into urgent maturation? You know, did we probably need to innovate within our challenge? Mm. Not, not, not excusing IBC yeah. from proper management, but also taking note that there may be that clerk. I know these clerks come from Jubilee zones, NASA zones. Mm -hmm. There may be that clerk who may want to sabotage Uhuru's uh, win or maybe Raila's win. Yeah. In either zone, you know, mm. then they mess up. Will you then nullify that? So that is, that is the dilemma that Njoki was trying wow. to point out. No perfect democracy here. Let me ask you this then, yes. the crucial mm. question. Yes. Angelas and I discussed this earlier on. There are exactly 26 days until October 17th. Yes. Steve, 26 days. It seems highly impossible yes. that we're going to have an election on that day. Do you agree? No, 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 no. no. That, the fact that election must be held is no longer, it's not open to contestation. We must have elections. Otherwise, if we don't have election, IBC shall have failed in a very significant way and for sure, the whole commission will go home. Okay, can we have an election on the 17th? Yes, we can have an election and we will have an election. On the 17th of October? 17th October or 24th, a date that is convenient, but yes, in the remaining 34 days, we will have an election. And uh, more for, was it more for? Mm. Safran, more for. They'll have, they'll have uh, the Kim's kits ready. Remember the, the, the biggest uh, concern was not being able to rejig or, 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 or you know, get the Kim's kits ready. Can they get it ready by that time? Well, Mofo had said that they needed up to uh, 24th to be able to reconfigure the, uh, uh, the, the Kim's kits. Yeah. But I think what is important, and maybe I may want to um, sensitize the public on this, mm. in terms of election management and also assuring the, pub the public that we can have a free, fair, credible election, what IBC needs to do is to communicate with clarity the steps it has taken so far. Remember, the infrastructure is there. Technology, the law says, is supposed to facilitate voter registration, which is already done. Mm -hmm. Voter identification. Done. Which is already done because, okay, we did verification. But then now, uh, identification at the polling station. And then to help us in transmission. Mm -hmm. Transmission has been clarified that transmission will come from the polling station to the commission and also from the constituency to the commission. Now, what IBC will not do as a result of this judgment is to send alphanumerical statistical data. They'll just send the scanned copies. Should, assuming that we had a crisis and are, are unable to con reconfigure the Kim's kit for purposes of transmission, for identification, they are there. That mm. will work. Mm. Because the data is there. You get. Remember, the purity of the electoral process or the integrity of the vote can still be preserved at the ballot, at, at, the, at the polling station. Right, at the yeah, constituency level. A, at the polling station. Each polling station has a maximum of 700 uh, voters. And the law requires IBC presiding officer to record the ballot papers you have in the polling station mm -hmm. and the agents to countersign. Mm -hmm. The moment voting is done, and remember we are using transparent voting uh, 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 ballot boxes, the moment voting is done, all the votes are poured on the table, as, as all of us saw. Mm -hmm. They are counted there, they are tabulated. You walk away with your true copy of the results. Even if technology was to fail, Jeff, on the transmission end route to Nairobi, you as an agent of Uru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga, you have your true copy which you will carry to the constituency telling center mm -hmm. and tell the returning officer, well, we have come from the several polling stations in this constituency. These are our copies. Let us see what you announce. If there is any challenge, remember the, uh, uh, the returning officers, they are required to consult and say, Jeff, I am the, I'm the, I'm the constituency returning officer. These are the votes for this constituency. Mm -hmm. Then you can say as an agent for Raila, well, my totals vary slightly. Can you do another addition again? Then that matter is settled there. By the time the constituency returning officer is transmitting, sending the scan document to Nairobi, mm. you already have your result. You get. So I think uh, I, would not, I, would not, I would not assess uh, Kenya's ability to hold election based entirely on the Kim's kit, you know, not uh, being reconfigured, mm. but IBC should do everything possible to accommodate the request by the service provider mm. to have them reconfigured with those additional five days. Jealous. <coughs> NASA are saying that uh, Hassan Mofo <laughs> should not be part of the selections. Yes. Uh, that means they will have to outsource another company. 
Yes. Just like Al Gurai with the printing. Al Gurai also, I've said, yes. will not and cannot print. Yes. They don't trust Al Gurai printing. Yes. See? Meaning, uh, this might delay other things if all these steps are taken yes. to do away with Mof mm -hmm. and also to do away with Al Gurai. That means more other time. Yes. God forbid there's no elections in the next 34 days. Where are we standing? First of all, just to clarify on that issue, NASA's demands must be founded in the law. You get? Mm. Um, it's also not open to NASA to make outrageous. Outrageous, not in the sense that they're not sensible. Outrageous, I mean, outrageous that are in the sense that they are not founded somewhere. There must be a foundation for which you're making that is. Right now, if you look at the judgment, the courts did not indict uh, suffering. Uh, 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 um, Morpho, Morpho mm -hmm. and the court did not indict uh, the printer. So it will be very difficult for NASA to sustain the claims that they be replaced. I would privilege an approach that seeks to innovate within the chain. What is the mischief that NASA seeks to cure? NASA, if I understand them right, they want to ensure that the ballot papers that are printed have security features. Mm. That can be achieved even if Algorai was printing. You get mm. They want to be sure that transmission of results is secure. That can be achieved even if it was still suffering from still doing the transmission. So what is it that IBC can do to reassure NASA that you are, you, the, your fears, your concerns, genuine concerns have been addressed, not seeking to replace those two? If they are not replaced, that is not a, a ground for not holding election jealous. Election must be held. I think the decision to hold election is dependent on IBC's own compliance with the law and not direction mm -hmm. by either of the political side. Okay, uh, scenario. Yes. Election is called, whether it's the 17th, the 24th, or the 31st, which is 60 days. Eh? Yes. 31st of October is exactly 60 days since the, the judgment. NASA refuses. We said we're not going to the election. But IBC has called an election. Yes. What happens? Well, there are two approaches to that. If Rail Odinga, because he's the only candidate other than Huru Kinyata, if Rail Odinga writes formally to withdraw his candidature from the 17th or 24th October election, then under Article 138.1, it says if there's only one candidate nominated to run or available to run, then he shall be declared president. So the short, the short answer is that Huru will be sworn in as a matter of fact and law. Now, if Raila does not withdraw, and you know, if, if he withdraws formally, it means IBC cannot purport to conduct an election because the law says if there's only one candidate. Mm. You know, we have two candidates because there's a presumption in law that Raila is willing to run. Mm. If he writes formally and withdraws his candidature, then IBC cannot organize an election because he'll have to read, they'll have to read Article 138.1 that says if there's only one candidate, he shall be declared president. Mm -hmm. Now, if Raila refuses to, uh, to withdraw formally, he says, I'm not going to the election. So IBC must conduct the election, must prepare and deliver the election on 17th or 24th. Uh, if he tells uh, uh, NASA supporters that don't go and vote, well, you know, usually IB, uh, the polling stations will be opened. We'll have the votes counted. Of course, NASA sh supporters shall not have come out to vote. Uh, Uru will be declared winner as per the law. And he'll be sworn in. But what will happen is this. The presidency will suffer political legitimacy issues, which is why I think NASA must also be considerate in what is it that they are aiming to achieve. And IBC must also be sensitive to the demands made by NASA and communicate public the public. I have not seen IBC stating publicly, listen, we have received this nine-pointer from NASA. These are the things, Jeff, that we can do. Mm. And we have done one, two, three, four. Mm. We are unable to do one, two. For the following, for instance, IBC can say, we are unable to reshuffle, okay, we can reshuffle st key stuff, but we are unable to sack or fire key stuff because we don't have the mandate. Mm. There's no justification. Mm. And if you, even if we <laughs> attempted to sack them, they'll go to court and get orders. Mm. You get? Mm. So, that one, we have, to, we have just to innovate and work with it. Number two, on the printer, Algorai printing ballot pa papers. Yeah. We have an ongoing engagement contract with them we are just able to assure you that the ballot papers will arrive with security features and they'll be the voting will be open to, to interrogation you know at the polling station you will know how many papers have arrived and how many papers have been used and how many papers are leaving you know that is the assurance i can uh, we can give as a commission right, if right. they do that mm. 
and 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 Raila and or Nasa still insist on not going to election until Saffron or uh, or uh, Al Gurai uh, is kicked out of the election uh, uh, electoral process, then also it means that Nasa will lose the political dividend that they have. Remember, mm -hmm. they enjoyed some dividend, political and legal dividends, because they claimed election was falsified. The court agreed, so that can't be wished away, mm -hmm. and they made demands. Those demands have been addressed. The ones that can't be addressed must be explained. If well explained, NASA will lose political dividend, and on 17th or 24th, if election is held and they boycott, <coughs> they will not, it will not be open to them to mobilize their constituency to refuse or to sabotage the order of governance. That is very difficult. Okay, Steve, wow. I want to take a break, come back and mm -hmm. talk about what if the 60 days expire and we still don't have an election? What okay. are the scenarios? Okay. Does the third most powerful man in the country take over a caretaker government? What okay. happens? Also, the talk about Nusu Mkate. It's still out there. We can still hear the echoes of Nusu Mkate. Is that also a probability? We're okay. speaking to Steve Ogola here live on Hot 96. I tell you, man, the legalese in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just go quiet. <laughs> yes, yes, you know, yes. me and you yes. are in no way <laughs> allowed to talk about anything to do with the law no. and the constitution. <laughs> we are illiterate. <laughs> we are not illiterate. <laughs> Anytime we talk about them, we are wallowing in the miasmas of our dismay. <laughs> Kijana Omar will be proud of you, man. He'll be proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> the Hot Breakfast with Jeff and Jelano.